It's awesome brigade. How are we? Okay. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Yeah. And you? Highly competitive family. Yeah. Two mm -hmm. highly competitive families. That's healthy. Yeah. All the yeah. aggression comes from his mother. Just like my mum. So who is the talented chef? Who is the strongest? Yeah. I absolutely love cooking, but I've, I've learned it from mum, really. Yeah. I learned, I learned more cooking. So they tuck in or they out there like that for the whole night? <laughs> I'm glad he's got big ears, you know, because he can listen to me for once tonight, yes? This is the most important part of opening up and talking about what's going through your mind now. All I want you to do is just cook your heart you out. You don't want to know what's going through my mind now. <laughs> <laughs> As you want to tell me, give me a little snippet. I didn't see you taking a shirt off. <laughs> Lois, are you flirting with me? No. Stop it. Oh. Oh, this you is just spanked me on the arse. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you liked it. You liked it. Your mum's flirting with me, you're spanking me on the arse. <laughs> Meet tonight's family brigade, the Dawsons. Retired sportsman Matt is a Rugby World Cup champion who is now as competitive in the kitchen as he ever was on the field. Tonight he'll be trying to cook glazed salmon with crispy noodles and salad, Gressingham duck with Madeira and cherry sauce, and Greek yoghurt with homemade honeycomb and mixed berry coolie. On his team is proud mum and ex-dinner lady Lois, girlfriend and former beauty queen Joanne, and completing the lineup, his dad, Big Ron. Together, they're ready to tackle anything. The whole thing's teamwork. You know more about oh, that, that than yeah. anybody. All over it, yeah? chef. All over it. <laughs> okay, right. Starter. Glazed salmon with spinach and radish salad. Yeah, really nice marinade. Noodles. A little season. A lot easier to season them now in a bowl than it is in the pan. And just place those noodles in. As it cooks, it sort of sticks together. The salmon, that's been marinated with honey, soy, Dijon mustard, and lemon and ginger. Grated ginger. Nicely seasoned. And salmon in. As they've cooked on the bottom, we can take off the ring. Yeah? Yeah, and all you're looking for is just a nice little light oh, crisp. Oh, yeah. If the oil's cold, yeah, the, the noodles are going to go greasy. Salmon, if it's a thick slice like that, turn that on all four sides, top, bottom, and both sides, yeah? Vinaigrette, soy sauce, yeah, honey, grated ginger, tahini, OK, which is a really nice, smooth paste of sesame seed. To let the salmon rest, take it off. That is ready to come out, nice and crispy. A little bit of baby spinach. Just use the vinaigrette to season it lightly. No, no Mix. Season. No season. No, don't need it, because that's quite salty. I'm going to salt, salt. Now, look at the centre of the plate and just fan out. Just a little touch of dressing over there. OK, because underneath, sometimes, the radish can be a little bit bland. Around the outside. <laughs> Noodles on. And then your salmon. I'm so hungry watching this. <laughs> Have a little taste. Oh, yeah, okay. get familiar okay. with it. Okay. Yeah? Get in there. Give me some crispy. Mm. Right, any questions? No chef. Good. No Very chef. good. Right, the Dawson Brigade, yes. First ticket on order, four covers table two, four salmon, four duck, four yoghurt. Yes, sir. Yes, yes chef. chef. Not too much in there, Joanne, otherwise it'll be a nightmare cooking them. There you go. You only need just literally there you go. It's a nice thin base. Okay. There you go. Is that too much in that no, one? That's absolutely fine. Sure Matt, try and make sure the salmon you put in, yeah, yeah. Ooh, pretty much the same size, so they cook evenly, yes? Okay, chef. Right, good. Ooh. There you go. A little bit more oil in there because you're scorching it as opposed to. Yeah? Okay. Ron, what you do, I think you're taking them out too early. And when you put them in the ring, you to push them down a little bit. Right. Joanne, when they come yes, out, sir. good girl, on, they come out onto a nice cloth what to drain. These? That's it, well done. Oh, my, they're going to be too... You're going to say that's too much now, aren't you? Uh, right. Yeah, oh, right, way too much. Quick. Okay. Right, radish is on here. In yeah. the bin. Quick. So you were Miss Northern Ireland. I was, yeah. Ten years ago, is that right? I know, it seems, you must like, have been well, 12, it seems right? like yesterday. <laughs> Jesus. I know, Christ. it was fantastic. Oh. It was the best experience of my life, I have to say. Have you still got the sash? I have. <laughs> well done. So you feel that salmon down the middle, beautifully cooked, nice and pink. Already? Yeah. And just Lovely. be careful. Yeah. Yeah, up and under, yeah? And I'll put the vinaigrette on. Good girl. Right. Are you happy with those? Yeah, beautiful. Would you play with them? I love them. Yeah, they look fantastic. Right, four more now. Let's yeah. go. Quick. Slice off, please. Table nine. Right, time for Janet Street Farmer to take her calves for a family day out. For the past few months, Janet's been rearing veal calves, David and Elton, for the F-Word restaurant. I should have trained that one for the Grand National. Last week, they went free range. Definitely the right decision. Janet's campaign to raise the popularity of British veal began by trying to get school kids interested in eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Next, she tried to encourage consumers at Ripon Market to buy it. Can I tempt you with some veal stew? Now Janet's tackling the beginning of the chain, the farmers who should be rearing veal. Today it's the Yorkshire Young Farmers Country Show. An annual bash that attracts hundreds of farmers from all over the region. 
Janet needs to persuade these farmers to keep their surplus dairy calves and raise them for meat. In the barn, Janet's grooming her boys to be the perfect ambassadors for her Eat British Veal campaign. You look fantastic, you do. I don't want any more shitting. Don't do one now. It's showtime for David and Elton. But back at the country show, things have taken a turn for the worse. Well, it's pissing with rain in North Yorkshire. I've got up and I've spent the first hour of my day wiping mud off a calf's bum. And I wonder what Gordon's doing. Despite the weather, Janet's hoping a squeaky clean veal calves will create quite a stir here today. Hello. Where have I got to go? <laughs> so far, she's been doing pretty well without them. Oh, shit. Oh, you're going to have to back it, Janet, I'm afraid. It's too tight. Fucking useless. Well, hold on, Janet. You're going to jackknife it, Well, It's a bit tight, isn't it? Yeah. Right, out here now. You're about to do there. Yep. I thought you were going to make a right ass of that, but you did very well. <laughs> Janet's sideshow is certainly attracting plenty of attention. No, I can't. <laughs> but these are hard-nosed traditional Yorkshire farmers. If she's to persuade them to rear veal, first she needs to change their perception of veal farming. Hi. Hello. Hi. What do you think of them? Are they going to make you a lot of profit? I doubt it, because it wasn't really about making money on these two. It, it's all to do with economics. But they if there was them... a market for it... But, there is, were... but they can't make them big, because it costs too much money to, to go on. If we could persuade the British public to eat veal... Yeah. Yeah. ..then it would be economically viable for you to rear it. you never eaten veal at all? <laughs> you don't find it in... You don't eat little calves, do you, John? No. You, no. you don't find it on oh, menus. Right. It's still cruel eating little calves. Now you're talking out your ass if you don't mind me <laughs> saying. <laughs> <laughs> because these are slaughtered at exactly the same age as lamb. I bet you eat lamb. <laughs> are you not getting a lot of uh, positive...? Uh, a lot of people are very set saying... in their ways. Yes, well, I mean, we are Yorkshire, though. We don't like change. Janet's getting nowhere. It's no wonder with these outdated attitudes that there are currently less than 40 veal farms across the UK. What she needs is some divine intervention. Maybe some refreshments will help the young farmers see the light. Have a biscuit. If we hadn't bought them, they'll be shot or gone to the continent, which I think is cruel. It's a waste, isn't well, it? It's yeah. a complete waste. Thank you know, very much. Get the message Thank out. You very much. Yes. Success. She's dug in her heels, and Janet's finally persuaded some of the young Yorkshire men to consider taking up veal farming. They look good, don't they? Yeah. Would you like one of my leaves? Have one. Thank you. With a bit of luck, the fields of Yorkshire will soon be full of veal calves, just like David and Elton. After their big day out, as standard bearers for the British veal industry, Janet settles her beloved boys in for the night. It's just so exciting, being a film star. The salmon's really soft and it works really well with the noodles, and the radish and the spinach complements it well because it gives a light side to the dish as well. Nice to see you. How was your starter? Uh, very nice, thank you. Uh, the salmon was cooked to perfection. I just think that there might have been, well, there was a fine line between crispy and cremated with the noodles right. yeah. tonight. Cremated. Oh, they're a little bit too coloured. Something you try at home? If he cooks it. <laughs> if he cooks it. <laughs> Hold on a minute. So who wears the trousers in your house? I wear the trousers, he wears a pinny. He wears the pinny? That's oh, so good. And what do you do? Going out on telly, <laughs> so I'm in the army, <laughs> believe it or not. What regiment? Uh, I'm in the wall signal. Give us a, an indication in Morse code whether you're going to pay for this or not. Da di da da di 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 di. That means yes. That's a big yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was great texture uh, and real contrast between the noodles, which are very crunchy, and the salmon, very soft, succulent, beautifully cooked. Right, Jose, let's go. Results, please. Here we go. Whatever's in there, I thought you did a fucking good job, yeah? And the number of the customers that are willing to pay for the starter. 45 out of 50, oh! well done. Excellent. 
That is a very good starter. That is a very, very good start. But here's the good news. Come the high scoring brigade so the far, Dawson yes, team and okay, team. have only scored 39 out of 50 for the starter. So already you're six in front, yeah? Keep it up, yes? Yeah? Now, right. clear down on your sections, get ready for the main, yes? Next up, I mean, do we need this fucking thing? I get all dressed up to go hunting for Essex birds. Are you taking the piss out of me or what? Seriously? Right, welcome back to the F Word. Time for the main course. Dressing it up with Madeira and cherry sauce. Packed with protein and absolutely delicious. Score. Season. Rub. Hot pan. The secret here is seaming it on the fat side of the duck breast. That will give it a really nice, crispy colour. In the oven, 8 to 10 minutes, 190 degrees. Madeira sauce, hot pan, olive oil, shallots, mushrooms, season. The secret of the Madeira sauce is keeping it really nice and sweet, slightly fruity, to help match the richness of the duck. Madeira wine. Absolutely perfect for making sauces with rich, gamey meat. Reduce. Chicken stock. Bring that up to the boil. Sieve. Duck breast out. Rest. That's what I want. All that flavour in there in my sauce. Cherries. Cut them in half. And then add our Madeira sauce back into the pan. Lovely. Butter. Cool. Duck. Sauce. Gressingham duck with Madeira and cherry sauce served with caramelised endive. Done. Right, Matt. So you can turn them on the fat. Yeah, put the other pan on, get another four on there. Yeah. Yeah. And then propose to your girlfriend. Hey! <laughs> Lois. Yes, Jay. You'd like to see your son married, wouldn't you? I would, as long as he's happy with her, then that's fine by me. Get over, Matt. <laughs> Why do you think he's waiting so long? Is he scared? They You're want... celebrating 40 years this I year. I am. The perfect we recipe. Are. Excuse are. me. Boring, isn't it? Boring. He'll be going out with him 40 years before he proposes to it. Matt. Pepper. Good colour. Keep on turning around. It cools the pan down so it doesn't get too hot for you. Oh. Where's the sauce? Ron, we've got to start working together as a team again, guys, yeah? Yes, yeah. yeah. Take that and pour it on there for yourself. There you go. Nice. Yeah, yeah, this there one here, the last one. Yeah, very nice. Oh, well done. First table, table there. nine, please. Ooh. Okay. Yes, yeah. Good. Good. Grab those, I'm going to talk to some customers. Those, oh. Sorry, oh. Oh. Dizzy. Oh. Welcome to the oh. Airport Question. How are you, yes, buddy? Yeah, I'm good, man. You're a bit of a foodie, aren't you? Yeah, man. Yeah. Anywhere I go around, I want to try and eat. Yeah, really? Food, and man. what kind of food do you favour? Like Thai food. Like, Thai food? Like chicken, a lot of rice, and stuff like that. You enjoy cooking when you get a chance to do it? I like the achievement, the sense of achievement in the end, when you make something quite nice about it. So, you started young rapping, right? Yeah, about 13, 14. I DJed first, I used to mix drum and bass. I started doing it for a joke, and then yep. I started taking it seriously once I could vent. But at 13 years of age, that's young. By the time I was 15, yep. I was on pirate radio outside the school. I do one in the morning till three o'clock in the morning. Seriously. On pirate radio, then go to school. Yeah. And ask everyone, did you hear me? And they didn't, because obviously really? they were asleep. Fast asleep in bed. Yeah. Like all the school children. Yeah. So, your own record label now? Dirty Stunt, yeah. D I R. What is that, a roast chicken? It's a lump of shit. <laughs> it's, <laughs> from here, it looks like a roast chicken, something out of Jamie Oliver's yeah, cookbook. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you Why go. a lump of shit for a record label? It's the grimiest, nastiest thing I can think of. This actually came from a lyric. I had at least to have a lyric called Lyrical Tank. Boxing MC like my name was Frank. Going on dirty, going on stank. Robbing MC like Barclays Bank. So I just took the dirty and the stank okay. and made that the label. From here, it looks like a roast chicken with lemon, thyme and herbs. There you go. Huh? Appetising, yeah? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, we should do something together, maybe. You know that. We, we should do a song. Can you imagine? Yeah, man. I'll do the roast chicken. <laughs> you do the shit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the milk. Oh, ah. the roast chicken. <laughs> How nervous were you watching yeah. your son in the World Cup? Oh, I can't tell you. Where were you for the final? Minutes. There. We were there. You were there on the pitch. Oh, yeah. on, the, on the pitch at the end. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I wish and the dining section as well. Another duck there. And huh? the cherry Look, there. Just more, a few more cherries on the bottom there. Yeah. yeah. Matt, your yeah. hands shaking. Okay. Uh, a little bit. Huh? You can win a Rugby World Cup, but you're panicking, putting one duck breast on the no plate. Panic, no panic. Huh? Last table. They are beautifully cooked. Yeah? Are they good? Really well done. Yeah? Ron. 
Don't worry about that. Yeah. Now. I can, Matt, I can see where your cooking skills came from, yeah? And don't forget, we like the duck breast slightly pink, so when the sauce goes on top, we finish cooking it, yes? Yeah. We don't serve the duck breast medium. <laughs> right, Ron, you happy with those? Thanks, yes, chef. Yeah, very good indeed. Right, the best way to get rid of pests is to eat them. Some people are squeamish about pigeon as a food because we make the mistake of thinking these dirty little buggers are the ones you eat. But out of town, there's a different species and a different pest. Wood pigeon are rich, gamey and delicious, but it's because they gorge themselves on millions of pounds worth of crops a year. So to help farmers, we should be eating as many as possible. I'm in Essex to learn how to shoot these birds properly with the help of pigeon big gun Gary Green. Where do you shoot it? Are we looking for the head? Good head kill. You don't want to spoil the meat. No. A nice clean kill. The yeah. lead passes through the bird. Nothing worse than eating a pigeon breast. And you've got these little small yeah. barbarians. No, that's right. And it is, it is crop protection is what we're doing. I'm doing it for food. Yeah. Right. I'm starving. <laughs> yeah. Pigeon are one of the tastiest birds to eat, but one of the trickiest to shoot. So I've opted for something as fast, agile and unpredictable as they are to practice with. Now bring it a little bit fucking closer. <laughs> These remote control planes will mimic the pigeon's movement and if they don't explode, I'm a shit shot. Fucking pigeons are half that size. <laughs> Fuck. Track the bird, track the bird, move off and fire. Done. Direct hit, that one. With my shooting skills improved, I put the fact that these planes were much bigger than the size of a wood pigeon to the back of my mind. She's well and truly done, right? Now for the pigeons, yeah? Excellent, thank, thank you. you very much. Bloody hell, thank you. That was good practice. We're heading to a rate field that should be in full yellow blossom, but it's been eaten away, and if it isn't protected soon, it will be gone completely. Gary's laid out decoys to convince passing birds it's safe to land. And that's going to attract them over? Yeah, sure. Are you sure we didn't get them from fucking Coronation Street? Look at them, <laughs> huh? Stuck on the wall. And it's crucial they don't see us first. <laughs> Are you fucking real? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, all jokes apart. I mean, do we need this fucking thing? You will do. We're talking about a pigeon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? But if we want them at 25 yards, this is what we've got to do. Seriously? <laughs> and I'm going to say... <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Are you taking the piss out of me or what? Seriously, no? <laughs> this is it. This I've, is it? I've got mine here. Go on. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> we'll get arrested. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're ready to shoot. All we had to do was wait. <laughs> Fuck! Expected to do well straight off. It takes a while. I am. <laughs> Fucking hell. You see it? Actually came up to me and stuck the finger up, shut on my head, and then fucked off. The pigeons were lightning fast, and the excitement was getting the better of me. Damn shit. Fucking hell. But there were plenty of birds. Look at that lock for you. And I had plenty of cartridges. How about this one? Safety off, shoot. And again. Yes! Lovely shot. Fucking well done. Well done, there. Finally, man. Jesus. On your third shot. Well done. Brock the dog is used to find the birds quickly and prevent further damage to the crop. Yeah, that's your bird, sir. You're very Fantastic. first. Fantastic. Palumba Columbus. About time, though. No? Well done. Fuck. A top notch shot can bag hundreds of pigeons a day like this, many of which are exported to the continent. Been into it now, haven't you? Yeah where Pigeon is very popular. Again. Well done. With Gary's help, I shot three in around three hours and they weren't going anywhere. Well done. Fuck. Dog couldn't wait. <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> right. well, a lot more difficult than you think, you know that? Huh? Oh, yeah. I knew it was going to be tough, but I didn't quite think it was going to be that fucking hard. In the kitchen, I'd pluck the pigeons first, but Gary has a method I've never seen before. So you're not plucking them? No. Oh, no, no, no it's too messy. Right. And it takes too long. Yeah. So I'm just going to dislocate the wings. Yeah. A little bit and just roll it out. So... Bloody hell. And no mess. Yeah. And no feathers everywhere. So dislocate the... Just dislocate it and wind it off. And then break out right-handed. That's it. Pull out. 
Yep, yeah, and you just pick that off there, and it'll skin right off. Jesus. Well done. Christ of mine, are so much quicker and a lot easier to cook with as well, you know that? Look how rich that is. Mm. Huh? I'm very lean. Yeah. Lean, healthy, and fucking delicious. Gary's taught me how to shoot and pluck them. Now I'm going to show him a delicious way to cook his pigeons. I'm going to do a really nice um, salad of pigeon, black pudding, mm -hmm. yeah, and pancetta. Cut through the wishbone, which makes it easier to remove the pigeon breast. Nice thing about pigeon, it's slightly gamey, not too strong, but bloody delicious. That's what I want there, look. Really nice thin marbling of the fat in there. Marinade in salt, pepper, and olive oil to keep the pigeon tender. Whilst I'm waiting, cut up the pancetta into nice sort of lardons. Place the marinated breast in a hot pan. Beautiful. And literally one minute each side. Whilst the pigeon rests, fry the pancetta in the same pan. Pancetta in. We'll make a very, very quick dressing. I'm making a dressing with olive oil and sherry vinegar. The sherry vinegar gives it a really nice, tart, exciting flavour. Add salt, pepper and lemon juice. Just a little tablespoon of the vinaigrette. So as the pigeons start to cool down, it absorbs that really nice sherry vinegar. And this is where we get the black pudding. And the black pudding gives it a bit of a spice. Yeah. It just crumble into the bacon. That is a chef's dream. That was fantastic. Deglaze the pan with sherry vinegar. It gives it a really nice sort of vibrant flavour. Drain it through a sieve onto a plate. That is fit for a king. Dress a watercress, rocket and frisée salad and add the black pudding and pancetta. Mix that through. Colours are extraordinary. But the real star is the pigeons. Look at that. I never thought an Essex bird could be so fucking tasty. Pigeon on. Touch of vinaigrette. Off you go, my man. Cheers, thank you. Tuck in. Nice. Crispy bacon and a really nice pink pigeon. What a lovely way of eating black pudding as well. Mm. In a salad, crispy, fried, and the bacon. That's that. fantastic. I can clearly cook, but I can't fucking shoot. <laughs> you know. Last table. Quick, quick, Lois, Ron. Okay. Well done. Thank you, Chef. Uh, sauce? Hold on, Judge. Yeah, sauce is on. Yeah. Well done. I haven't had those combinations before. Um, the pak choy worked beautifully with it, really crispy, the duck was really tender, beautiful dish. Now, how was the duck? Awesome. Very really good. good. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Something you could try at home? I reckon so, yeah. Yeah? yeah. I thought the sauce might have been a little bit thin, but other than that, it was wicked. Really right. good, good veg. Are you trying to show off your chest hair, or have you forgot your shirt? It's actually stitched into the T-shirt. <laughs> what, the hair? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, hair. I'm, be, I'm bare as a baby's voice. <laughs> Do you like his hairy chest? Oh, it's all right. That means no. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. Save room for dessert, yes? Well, nice, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> is really succulent. Um, the Madeira sauce wasn't too overpowering and the cherries really added something to the flavour. Um, it was just absolutely delicious. <laughs> Felt amazing to be part of a kitchen cooking for actual people. You're just on the go all the time and, and also you're thinking about it too, you know, where you go to do this, that and the other. We are here to have an unbelievably good time. We also want to win. Right, result for my course. Jose, I think let's go. I think it'd be tough. Right, the number of guests that are going to pay for their main course is. 39 out of 50. Oh. That's good. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> so, 11 not paying. What are the reasons? The, uh, the, sauce, the sauce too watery. Anything else? Sauce too thin. Like... Under seasons. Under seasons? Under seasons. Oh. Okay. Coming up. Are you a big fan of deep fried Mars bars? Never had one. Edith Bowman puts on a brave hearty performance in the recipe challenge. Play good. The brigade cook up a delicious dessert of yogurt, honeycomb, and berry coolie. And Tom Parker Bowles takes nose to tell eating to extremes. Oh, that is beautiful. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time for the recipe challenge, and tonight's challenger is the heavily pregnant Edith Bowen. Good to see you. Good to see you too. And if you lose, you're going to call your baby Gordon, right? Well, middle name, would that do? What are you cooking? Uh, I'm going to do haggis, going to uh, traditional Scottish on your ass, with uh, neat and tarties. Now, where did the recipe come from? Um, Mum, basically. Oh, really? Yeah, I grew up in a hotel, so. Um... So your love of food comes from growing up in restaurants? I, I grew up in a kitchen, uh -huh. so it was. It was... 
you know, kind of instilled in me from a really early age. Ready. It was my granddad and grandma that started the hotel, and then my mum's one of seven daughters, all oh, beginning wow. with E. Um, we've got Elsie, Elizabeth, Edna, Eleanor, Evie, Elaine, and Enid. That is very Scottish. So, um, Edie's doing a classic um, haggis, basically. So, I'm going to do a really nice haggis hash brown uh, mixed with sweet potato, a little bit of Worcester sauce, onion, and then I'm going to crumble my haggis in to my hash brown, fry it, and stick a beautiful fried egg on top of that. Uh, very good knife skills, by the way. Nice fine dice. You're making me nervous, That's the Edith. idea. Yeah, you're only making hash browns. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, what else are you doing? The, yeah. Tell me a little bit about the sauce. You've got cream, whiskey, mustard, a little bit of lemon juice. Uh -huh. Kind of just makes it a little bit tart and brings out flavours. Mm -hmm. How many times a year do you get a chance to get back to Scotland? Oh, I go back every couple of months. Are you a big fan of deep fried Mars bars? Never had one. Never tasted one. Here's your chance. Now, just feel it first. It just feels wrong. <laughs> it's got legs on it. Oh, God. Oh, it's my just... God. Bloody good. A true I really never Scottish thought I'd ever eat one of these. <laughs> They're ready. Look at that. Caramelised onions at its absolute best. So fried them off, a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, a little touch of sugar, and then Worcester sauce. Haggis is in the oven. Sweden mash are pretty much cooked off, so I've stuck in some butter, some black pepper, and some salt, and uh, given it the old fashioned mash up. Either this is going to have lumps in hers, and mine's going to be a nice, fine puree. Smell the reek. <laughs> oh! I want to you do two. You gonna, oh, look at that. I huh? can do the first verse. Uh, go on. Are we ready? Fair for your honest son, see face, great chieftain of the pudding race. I've been them all, you tack your place. That's as much you can do. Huh? Yeah. Smell it. That smells delicious. Oh. It? See? Hey, pretty good. I really need to make this sauce now. Neeps and tatties. Yeah. Right. French mustard, yes. Yeah. Irish one. whiskey, cream from Jersey. <laughs> There's nothing Scottish in there. <laughs> and you're checking out your recipe book. Look at you. It's, oh, I've got pregnant brain. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to start crumbling my mix together now, OK? So the idea now is just to crumble the haggis through the potatoes. Have you had contractions yet? You had lots of kicking and things well, like you that. You feel again. things that you've never felt before, obviously, because it's my first. So Weird, you're kind of like, what's that? Yeah. Don't you get fed up with people touching all the time? No, I like that. Oh, really? I like, well, I like people I know touching it, random Can strangers it? in the street. Wash your hands first. Please. Oh, come on, it's got haggis on there. <laughs> Excuse me. We can infuse oh, the haggis <laughs> into the child. Oh, you touch? <laughs> <laughs> OK. I thought the Scottish baby would like the haggis. Sweet. Oh, <laughs> 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 OK. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it's it if you could right now. Uh, are you in there, big man? Come out! Not yet. <laughs> It'd be nice. We can have a very own F-word baby. Come on. It'd be great. <laughs> right. I'm dying to taste that. Do you mind? Uh, look at you catching the pips as well. I'm not finished yet. It is. Oh, fuck. What? It's actually quite nice. Huh? It's actually quite nice. No, it nice. is nice. You haven't put the whiskey in yet. Yeah, no. Uh, no, I don't mean to sound so surprised, but it is absolutely delicious. I've just fried mine, finished yeah. it with a wee bit of butter. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to put it in the oven to get nice and crispy. OK? OK. Yeah, and I'll be two minutes, and then yeah. we're going to ready to serve. OK. Get my egg ready. In terms of uh, when you grew up, based in the kitchen, yeah, saw mum yeah. dad working hard, involved yeah. in restaurants. You never wanted to go into the industry? No, I, I kind of I worked in it from the age of uh -huh. 11. I, I needed to get out of that environment. Small town as well, I kind of wanted to get to the bright lights, big city. Look at that. Beauty! Let me just remove my ring. Look, you've even done the layers as well. You are such a fucking chef. <laughs> go, girl. I get it simple. Well, if that wins, I am going to be pissed. Huh? <laughs> right, Jose, come back with the best result. <laughs> right, here's Tom Parker Bowles, the human dustbin. When we think of eating pork, we tend to think of sausages and bacon, but every part of the pig can be eaten from the toenails through to the snout. <laughs> We're all looking for ways to save money on food bills, and the cheaper cuts of pork could be the answer. One of these boys is my pig. There he's in front of you. This one here? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. I mean, look at the size of his bollocks. That was a huge. To prove the entire pig can be eaten nose to tail, I'm going to attempt to prepare and eat 21 dishes out of this porky little fellow. <laughs> Costing just over £100, my boy weighs 87 kilograms. About one third of that weight would normally be thrown away. I'm going to find out just how far a whole hog can stretch. Ah, it just makes you feel a bit odd just looking at this. Offal's not much to look at, but tastes fantastic. It's used in many great traditional recipes we should all still be cooking. So this being no to tell, nothing goes to waste, not even the toenails. So I'm going to take these back. Looking forward to eating these. 
Some of the offal needs to be prepared straight after slaughter, so I'm taking my pig to a specialist butcher nearby. Tongue that's still connected to the trachea. OK. So all of this here is edible? All of it's edible, even the lungs there that would normally be used for the, something like haggis. And then it's back to London to deal with the rest of the carcass. So this is the whole pig here we got, really, isn't it? Yeah. Everything. OK. Whole pig. Legs? Yep. Loins? Shoulders? Bellies? And obviously the other side we've got the same as well. Seeing my entire pig laid out in front of me makes me realise just how little of the animal we normally consume and just how daunting a challenge I've set myself. Very important, the cock, of course, that's going to be in my mouth later on. Today is the day I'm going to take on the challenge of eating my entire pig nose to tail. I start with an Italian breakfast dish known as tobigo. It contains kidney, liver and black pudding. Oh, that would be beautiful. Now for the rest of the beast. Traditionally, one pig could provide a family of four with enough meat to get them through the winter. It's too much for me, so I roped in my wife and some friends to help me out. And what dinner party would be complete without one of these? I wonder if you can guess what that is. Yep, it is the pig's arsehole. I mean, look at that. Tongue. Ugh. Although they may seem obscure, these ingredients, if cooked properly, are delicious. I'm using them to create a soup with a difference. Let me make a sort of Sichuan style soup. Sichuan is a province of China. The Chinese are great offal eaters, and the chili and spices should make this dish a real treat for the taste buds. I mean, there's something really fundamentally repellent about putting knives into eyes, even if it's a pig's eyes. Oh. I mean, look at this. This is this is this is that pig, that nice little porker that not very long ago was running around the field. <laughs> Transformed. I'm going to be serving 21 sumptuous dishes, including a wonderfully decadent stuffed stomach of swine. Half head roast glazed in honey and cider. A delicate Sichuan tongue, eye and penis soup. Crisp trotters with toenail garnish. And testicles and brains sautéed in seasoned flour. Right on cue are my swine gorging friends, just in time for canapes. Quite spicy. Now you're going to tell me it's like no, a testicle or something, no, aren't you? There's no <laughs> testicle, there's no arsehole, there's no nothing in it. That's a heart. It wasn't too scary, that bit of lung, a bit of liver, a bit of heart, but actually in that spicy sauce, no worries at all. So, so far, so good. So here we have the nose to tail. That's half the head, OK? I might try the snout if anyone wants it. No more. Why is there still hair on it? This, this is all the nice, nice parts of the head. That's actually really nice. I can't resist snaffling the chef's perk and the tastiest part of the head, a crisp pig's ear. Very, very good. We go on to enjoy a feast of pig trotters served on a bed of griddle radicchio with herb vinaigrette. It's the nail on the end. Oh, it is it's actually amazing. Yeah. Some succulent ribs marinated in chili and espresso. It's quite um, Asian, isn't it? We saw the, uh, the nose. I'm sort of about three quarters of the way down now, and there have been no complaints. I'm really enjoying it, and the unusual bits more than the, the straightforward. Then onto my stuffed pig stomach. A great way to use the fat, gristle, and skin seasoned with thyme, sage, and parsley. It's like stuffing. It's delicious. It's just a taste, you see. Up until now, everything has slipped down without incident. However, as we approach the back end of the pig, the last few dishes will really test the stomachs of my guests. It might, don't worry about the description. This is the bollocks and the brain. It's <laughs> mm, a bit chewy. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit queasy. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> we are grinding bones. What I need to do is just sprinkle it into this, this soup. And hopefully, the flavour of the Szechuan peppers, the chilli, will stop anyone tasting the bone, the arsehole, the eyes. Final item. Is that this? Let's have a little look. You see, is that an eyeball? Yes, it is. I think it must I think be. It must. See, look, there are the eyelashes. <gasps> Come and do the F word, see the world, <laughs> and eat an eyeball. <laughs> not I bet it's not as bad as it looks. <laughs> oh, right, right. That kind of. Oh, pretty They're fucking really disgusting. Right. Oh, God. This is like a horror lucky dip. It's no. horrible. That's it. <laughs> That's the arsehole. <laughs> wow. That's the arsehole, bub. Look. That's the bum. Come on. Oh, man. Oh, my. Oh, 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 oh
you're not gonna eat. You're not gonna eat that. No. Which ends worse? Well, I say the bit of the shit comes out of it. I wish this pig had had a sort of back sack and crap wax it. You're all man. I'm not. It's just thought. There's nothing wrong with the taste. I'm just thinking that I got an arsehole in my mouth. Come on, that doesn't taste nice, surely. Tastes a bit of shit, actually. No. Tom, nice to see you, my son. How are you? Well? Very well, thanks. Good. Pig. I can't yeah. believe Tom Parker Bowles ate a pig's arsehole. <laughs> I, I, I had to eat it. Yeah. it. It sounds sensationalist, but I wanted to eat it. No to tell to show that you can eat every single bit of a pig. I was fascinated by it. You know that. Yeah. Was it tasty? It was like eating a, just a, a very long braised mussel. It was just to prove that we waste yeah. too much of a pig. Yeah. We waste, you know, a third of the pig. Yeah. We yeah. don't eat offal enough. I mean, the true definition of offals varies, yes? Yeah. How would you define it? Well, the official thing is offal. I think when you hang yeah. up the carcass, it falls off, but that doesn't take in the dip. Yeah. Doesn't take in the arse, doesn't take in the brains, mm -hmm. doesn't take. Yeah. So actually, I say it's anything inside that most British hate. Yeah. But it did have a serious point: the fact mm -hmm. that we don't eat enough of the pig. These are cheap, good, nutritious cuts that yeah. we just ignore. Yeah. Now I know we're entering a credit crunch. So honestly, on the menu, there should be more awful eating, right? Liver, kidneys. Yeah. Troy is cheap. Has yeah. you know chips. Yeah. But yet we all hate it. Oh, it's disgusting. Cook yeah. well. It's delicious. But this yeah. is the thing: we don't eat any yeah. of these pots. The no. supermarkets just wrap yeah, all these things right. and tell us to eat all these nice, boring yeah. bits. It's rubbish. We should eat most of it, not the. So you missed a trick. What? A big trick, because the world's oldest condom made back in 1640 yeah, was made from the pig intestine. Did you try that? Yeah. Well, no. did I try to use a condom? Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> it was just to prove that you, we shouldn't be scared of these things. Rather you than me. Really good to see you. Cheers, <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> right, time for dessert. Homemade honeycomb with mixed berries. This is the secret. The honey inside the honeycomb. Hot pan, sugar, water, glucose syrup, honey. The colour is getting darker and darker. What we're looking for is a really nice light toffee. Baking soda. When the baking soda hits the caramel, it creates a really nice light bubbling sort of eruption, almost like a, a live volcano. Out and onto a tray. Once it's cooled down, Straight into the fridge. Mixed berry coulis, raspberries, blueberries, sugar, lavender essence. Be very careful, it's very pungent and incredibly powerful. Blitz. <laughs> Sieve. The colour is beautiful. Honeycomb, smash. Not too small, otherwise the honeycomb becomes powder. Yoghurt. Honeycomb into the yogurt. Mix. So we've got this really nice textured yogurt with honeycomb folded through. Take your berry coulis and just drizzle on top dried lavender flowers. Finish it with some tiny fragments of homemade honeycomb. And that has to be the perfect summer dessert. Yogurt with mixed berry coulis and homemade honeycomb. Done. That is perfect, Chef. Lois. Yeah, really well done. Thank so you. please don't get any of it on your skin, yes? It can seriously burn you. OK, oh, I'll get now, it. Yeah, my that's son. fine. Perfect, well done. Yeah. All the berries in. Don't forget lavender essence. One, Blend two. Blender. This is not the same what? lavender you put in your bath. It's a culinary <laughs> lavender essence. Give it a little shake, Matt. Just a little shake. That's it, just well done. Well done. Perfect. Thank Please you, do not chef. mix too much yogurt with a honeycomb, otherwise it will go soggy. Okay. Is that good? Is it? How's the honeycomb? Perfect. Pecans. Guys, got honeycomb throughout. Yeah. Good. And then get your ladle. Don't add your coolie, your berry coolie, into all the glasses are even. Yes. Not too much in the first one, chef. Lois, they're beautiful. Really nice. See, that's weighed out perfectly. Well done. Absolutely perfect. Glasses, nice and clean, guys. Yeah. Right. First okay. table, table nine, please. Yeah. Lois's table, yeah? Lovely. Coming up, I prove you can eat healthily even when you're cooking for a huge family. Who would like this for dinner again? Everybody! <laughs> Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time to find out who's a tall, blonde, talented Scottish cook and who's eating home. <laughs> <laughs> Quite salty. It's really rich. That would be a really good hangover breakfast. I much prefer the look of this one. I think this one looks fantastic. Yeah. Mm. It's a shame oh. to break into it, really. 
I'm not sure about that sauce. I like the way you can taste the different flavours. The time of the night where I get really excited. <laughs> right, give me the good news. They prefer hash brown, flaked well... with haggis and a nice fried egg. Go on. Um... Come on, then. It's Edith. Oh, yes! get out! What? Yes. What do you mean, Edith? Edith? Yes. What? It was lighter. Yours, they believe, was a bit too rich. A bit too rich? Yes. And what was the score? Three, two? Five mil. Oh, yes! for fuck's sake! <laughs> Get out of here, you Belgian <laughs> cabbage! That is Charlie, a fucking pleasure. joke. And you may have won, but uh, it's not for you. It's a wee Gordon. Yes? Oh, OK. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My mum went on the F word. <laughs> Come on, hen! <laughs> <laughs> oh, at my kitchen. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Five nil! I believe everyone can cook healthy food and you're never too young to start. I've come to Darlington, County Durham, to meet Lindsay and Ian Dade and their huge family. <laughs> Ian works as a binman and, like Lindsay, he's also a part-time student. But feeding eight children is no mean feat and they're struggling to cope. Feed them stuff we find in the freezer, this easy, quick, convenience food. I feel guilty feeding the kids frozen food. I know it's not the best food for them. I know they're not getting enough nutrients, but um, it's, it's, I don't see a way out. Hello. Hello. How are you, darling? Hi, fine. Nice to see you well. Now, eight of them. Yeah, eight okay. of them. Are you mad? No. Ah. <laughs> no, we enjoy it, we enjoy me. it. Are you stopping at eight or are you going for double figures? No, stopping at eight. Stop stopping at eight. eight. Thank yeah, God yeah. for that. How do you make a bit of baby weight, you see? Who Tiff? stocks this? Um, uh, well, I do the internet shopping. Chicken Kiev's, fish fingers, fuck me, roasted vegetable selection. Roasted, frozen, and then defrosted back in there. It's, it's an easy option, isn't it? I've lost a lot of inspiration for cooking. Uh -huh. I do. I, I need to get them eating healthy again. Fresh veg, yeah, is absolutely crucial. Who wants to go shopping? <laughs> yes. Lindsay needs to get excited about fresh produce again and get the kids involved too to make the shopping easier. Ask them for yellow peppers with no bruises. Can I some yellow peppers with no bruises? And you can ask for the cucumbers. Nice, firm, dark green cucumbers, please. And they have some nice, firm, dark green cucumbers. Good girl. Lovely, you're a star. See you next Saturday. You heard that, yes? We'll be here. OK, great. <laughs> I'm going to show Lindsay how to make a fast, fun and healthy meal that the family will love. Right, this dish is exciting, very nutritious for the kids and, more importantly, very, very simple to do. Leg steaks of lamb. They're low in fat for Lindsay and great for making the ultimate finger food for kids. So it needs a simple marinade, seasoned oregano, Mint, rosemary, of dried tarragon. Do the kids like garlic? Yes, they do. They Love do, it, yeah. yeah. Great it. The zest of a lemon, lemon juice. We'll leave that in the fridge, 45 minutes to an hour. The trick to getting kids eating vegetables is to make it fun. I'm going to get the kids making their own salads. Who's going to be the best? Me! You've got, OK, one minute each, starting from... Now, off you go. Come round, come round. Quick. I want to see the best one. Spread out a cucumber. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Nice. Are you ready for the kebabs? Yeah. Yes. Out with the marinated lamb. Delicious. Finished with mushroom. Nice and hot, lightly drizzled with olive oil, and then lamb. Yoghurt into the bowl. Yoghurt contains potassium, calcium and plenty of other vitamins. Fresh mint. It also makes a fantastic dip. Not just for the lamb, also for the salad as well. So it becomes really nice and healthy. Pita bread. A couple of spoons of the sauce. Kebabs. Mmm. Tyler, what do you think? No more frozen roasted vegetables. Promise. <laughs> Who would like this for dinner again? Everybody! <laughs> Everybody, that's right. Take care, sweet. Thanks. Uh, mm, <laughs> good to see you. Thank you very much, Jake. Yeah, my yeah. soul. Early Christmas present, yes? <laughs> Use them. Now bag it. Stop at eight, for God's sake. <laughs> It was just wonderful. It was perfect. It was orgasmic. It was everything you'd want in a pudding. It was just perfect. Wonderful. 
the lavender really overpowered the dessert and um, the yoghurt seemed to be slightly fizzy. Right off, yes? Yes. You look fucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely oh shattered, my yes. God. Right, Jose, let's go. Results, oh, please. OK, the number of guests that are happy to pay for the dessert is... 23 out of 50. <gasps> Hold on a minute. Why? Oh, you're on love. Jose. Um, not cold enough. Not cold enough. Not cold enough. Cold. Did anyone put hot honeycomb in the yogurt? No. What else? And the honeycomb being quite soggy as well. Honeycomb really? was soggy. Oh, it's a bit Damn. disappointing, that, isn't it? Really? That's just under half. 107 out of 150. <laughs> Damn. Oh, no. Where does that put us? It's, it's not, not the worst. worst. Unfortunately, it's not the best. Good effort, yes. Hey, it's been a pleasure having the Dawson Brigade in the kitchen, yes? Apart from that, obviously, yes? <laughs> now, Thank you very much. Go and get yourself a big ice-cold beer. You deserve it. Well done. Yeah. Woohoo!